My incel nephew wished my unborn child would unalive, so I banned him from attending my family functions. Now everyone is saying he's just a kid and that I'm overreacting, but he's 22. I, 37 male, and my wife, 35 female, have been arguing about this all week. Our nephew, 22 male, has always been troubled, even though my sister-in-law, 44 female, and brother-in-law, 48 male, have always treated him well. Some examples of his unsettling behavior, he was caught feeding one of my brother-in-law's horses avocados, which are poisonous to horses, if you didn't know, to make it sick. I have dogs and don't want him to hurt them as well. He demands to be called the names of two specific fictional characters. He believes he is these characters reincarnated. If you call him by his real name or refuse to go along with his delusions, he becomes aggressive. He carries around a plushie of one of these characters everywhere. There's a hole in the back and the hole is stained. I've tried not to jump to conclusions about what he does to that plushie and failed. It smells rancid and honestly, just thinking about the thing makes me want to vomit. I have tried so hard to be patient with his quirks, as my wife puts it. But what really pushed me over the edge was an incident that occurred a few weeks ago. For context, my wife has struggled with infertility for our entire marriage. And we've given up on having kids of our own until we recently discovered she is pregnant. Given the fact that she's 35, we have been surprised and overjoyed. A few weeks ago, my wife started randomly receiving rude texts from our nephew insulting our baby. One text implied that our baby would have FAS due to my wife's previous drinking problem, even though she's been sober for years. I wanted to call up that insensitive brat and tear into him. But my wife insisted we gently let him know via text that we didn't appreciate the comments. When he kept going and my wife started crying, I called my sister-in-law. She was able to shut him down and get him to apologize. I have no idea what the hell got into him, but I suspect it has to do with his hatred of women. My wife believes that he may be on the spectrum or have some undiagnosed mental illness and that he needs to be treated patiently. I think he's been coddled his entire life and it has only made him worse. I think if someone doesn't put their foot down, his behavior will escalate into something dangerous. Here's where I'm being told I'm wrong. Each year, my wife and I host Easter dinner for her entire family. My wife has already forgiven our nephew for the incident and is insisting we invite him so that he isn't isolated from his family, something she believes will worsen his behavior. I see her reasoning, but enough is enough. I refused. I said she is being like a doormat like everyone else in the family when it comes to him and that our man-child of a nephew can just make her cry and get away with it with an empty apology. Some of my friends are saying that I'm being controlling and that I can't stop her from seeing her own family. I feel like I'm going insane. What do you think? My wife and I had a long talk this morning in which I made it clear that I was more concerned about her and our baby's safety than anything else. I also apologize for resorting to name calling last night. My wife isn't a doormat. She just has a lot of love and patience to her family. It was a hard talk with some tears from both of us, but she agreed that this has escalated to a point that may become dangerous, in part due to the enabling from all of us. Honestly, I'm also guilty of coddling him, especially when he was a kid. It's hard to admit when someone you took care of as a kid has grown into someone unsafe to be around. But I think the idea in this comment might work as a way to set boundaries without shutting him out permanently. We're going to call his mother and explain that Easter dinner isn't happening this year if our nephew is coming, and that he's welcome to come over when he has a diagnosis and is stuck with a therapist for at least a couple of months. Thank you all for your advice. This bizarre series of events started on Easter and has only gotten weirder since. For those of you who don't remember my original post two weeks ago, my nephew was banned from our recent Easter dinner due to a concerning pattern of behavior, including recent disturbing text messages to my pregnant wife about our unborn child. Since then, his parents eventually agreed not to bring him after a lot of arguing. My sister-in-law eventually admitted that he may need professional help and that my wife and I may have some reason to be worried for our safety around him. And on Easter, 
Our worries were proven more than reasonable. He showed up uninvited using my brother-in-law's car. Our dinner was interrupted by aggressive bangs on our door. I don't know how to put this without it sounding insane, so here it goes. My nephew was at our door holding a sword and dressed as the Joker. He tried to say something, but I slammed the door in his face and told everyone inside what was going on. Chaos predictably ensued. My brother-in-law, a generally calm guy who I've never seen freak out or get angry, turned beet red and went outside. He ended up literally chasing our nephew around the house, screaming at him in an attempt to get him to leave. The neighbors came outside and my sister-in-law went into damage control mode, talking down one concerned neighbor from calling the police. Somehow, he dropped his sword in the chase and my brother-in-law tackled him on our front lawn. They got him into my sister-in-law's car somehow, and they left with him. So, Easter dinner was ruined. My wife was in tears, and I was so mad I was shaking. The good news is that this was a wake-up call for my sister-in-law and brother-in-law. Under the threat of them withdrawing financial support, my nephew has agreed to seek therapy and surrender access to his Tumblr blog, which he previously would spend hours a day posting on. His mother went through it and found a lot of alarming posts, including content about his hatred for women, screenshots posted of his text exchange with my wife, with captions bragging about his hurtful behavior, and several disturbing fan fictions with violent intimate content. They believe his being too online is worsening his behavior, and are hoping that limiting his access and forcing him into therapy will help. Thank you to all who convinced me to stand my ground in the comments of my original post. The situation is being taken seriously by my brother-in-law, wife, and myself. My sister-in-law still has her head buried in the sand a bit, but we are working on it. At the very least, she has not lifted the phone ban and she has been looking through his Tumblr as well as his other social media to see if he really had violent intentions. On Easter, she still believes my nephew only came to talk. In any case, he had his first therapy session with a new therapist this week. He has promised to stick with it, mostly because my sister-in-law said she would return his phone if he stuck with it long enough. Though I'm not sure how long long enough is. The plus side of him being a man-child is that he's either unwilling to just buy himself a new phone with the little money he has, or he doesn't realize that he's an adult who can gain financial independence. So his mother can just threaten to take things away from him, like he's a child in timeout. He's told his mom to let us know that he's very sorry for his behavior and that it won't happen again. Though I'm skeptical, my wife is still holding out hope but refuses to see him unless he shows substantial improvement. My brother-in-law is looking into resources for places he can get my nephew committed, should that become necessary. But he believes that the situation is under control as long as my sister-in-law doesn't budge. They have also confiscated his sword, and I don't think he has access to other dangerous objects. I was also sent a link to my nephew's Tumblr blog. My sister-in-law has already seen it on his phone, but didn't want to share its contents because she feels like we've villainized her baby enough. I went through his blog with my wife and didn't know whether to laugh, cry, or pour bleach into my eyes. His blog basically confirmed what you've all been trying to tell me about his pattern of violence and hatred for women. He posts a lot about how females are all entitled and how he hates ever having to interact with them. Additionally, he seems to be stalking one of his exes, which is a whole other layer of concern. He also writes intimate, explicit fanfiction about Muppets, which is not a safety concern, but has permanently ruined the entire show for me. Sorry, this update isn't very exciting, but a lot of people expressed concern for my family and my safety, so I'm letting you all know the situation is being handled and everyone is okay. For those wondering about the plushie of Kermit, it has gone missing according to my brother-in-law. I hope it stays missing forever. People are messaging me saying that he's back to updating his Tumblr account, so that likely means my sister-in-law has gone back on her word. I'm going to call my brother-in-law and update him. Also, he is still hiding the plushie somewhere because my brother-in-law was trying to throw it away and he can't find it anywhere. Sorry for the lack of updates, life has been a bit crazy. My wife and I went no contact with my nephew and sister-in-law, which has been hard on my wife because, you know, she's always been close with her sister. 
We've kept contact with my brother-in-law, keeping him updated if we saw anything concerning on my nephew's Tumblr account. As many of you have kept me updated, and boy did he post concerning stuff. I'm not sure what the last straw was. Possibly when he posted about cutting off part of his co-worker's hair and getting fired as a result. But my brother-in-law decided he had enough of my sister-in-law's permissive parenting and my nephew's destructive behavior going ignored. My brother-in-law has been trying to be harsher on my nephew to straighten him out, but my sister-in-law throws a tantrum every time he's tried, and now he has decided he's had enough. A few days ago, he packed up and left. Now it looks like he and my sister-in-law are going to get a divorce. He's been staying with us for a few days, going back once to make sure his horses were put in temporary boarding while he figures the stuff out. He is also working on getting a lawyer. In other news, my nephew has run away from home. He is 22, so I don't know if this means he's finally got an apartment or what. All I know is that a few hours ago, my sister-in-law called my brother-in-law and hysterically was crying that he had left a note and that it was all my brother-in-law's fault. I think that he may have gone to stay with some internet friends, but my wife is getting worried as it's 3 a.m. and there is still no sign of him. Actually, I'm also kind of worried, but I'm trying to stay level-headed and not think of the worst-case scenario. Sorry if this is unclear and sounds rushed, but stuff is still unfolding, and this has been a lot to deal with. I will answer any questions you all might have once everything calms down a bit. Several hours after I made this post, the police found my nephew in a small forest a few blocks away. He was hiding in the trees, and I guess he was going to try to live there. They returned him to his mom's house. I am exhausted.